Hey everybody, welcome to the 20 Minute Bible Study. I am Vince Miller. We're in a five week series entitled Five Virtues That Build Men. This is designed to be a starter series for this book right here, 30 Virtues That Build a Man. So if you're leading a men's group or just participating in one, you're gonna need one of these books for your time today. So pick one up from the store on the website at beresolute.org. Today's topic is brotherhood. You know, guys, um, I meet men all over the world, and I believe one of our most significant issues is our desire for isolation or autonomy. We prefer life alone, and we like this option because in isolation, we know we can just do whatever we want. Now, while this is an option, it's not what is best for us as men. Even the short amount of time that we're spending together today serves a divine purpose because without brothers in our life, we don't learn from others, we don't find support, we don't experience growth, we don't discover spiritual gifts, resolve conflict, and we don't experience the power of confession and forgiveness and healing. We simply just don't mature and don't get better as men. We need brothers in our life. In fact, Jesus commanded us to be in brotherhood. Even God lives in spiritual community, Father, Son, and Spirit. But Proverbs 27, 17 says this, iron sharpens iron. And iron only gets sharper when it's grinding against another harder object because we know unused iron will rust. So today, consider the incredible byproducts of this time and how God is using it right now to make you into the man that he wants you to be. So when we come back, we'll be joined by a special guest and a good friend who will help us to discover how we can encounter the powerful experience of brotherhood. Get your day started right. Sign up for the men's daily devotional at mensdevo.org. That's mensdevo.org. They're short, sweet, and to the point. Read them and share them with the men you know and get into God's word daily. Well, hey guys, welcome back. Good to have you here. Joined again by Vince Vaughn. Thanks for being with us. Two yeah. Vince's in one place. The world's coming yes. to an end, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't happen often. It so. doesn't. It never happens, man. I got to tell you. Um, anyway, today we're looking at the lesson on brotherhood. And uh, I, you know, I, I think brotherhood is something that we don't often seek out. Mm -hmm. I mean, I hate to jump right into this topic, but it's easy to jump into. Yeah. But, but why do you think that we... Why do you think brotherhood's not easy for guys, mm -hmm. especially in spiritual community? Yeah, I think there's probably a lot of reasons, but one is I think that our our culture doesn't naturally go that way, um, and so go that way meaning we just don't. It's not established for us. It's just we don't have natural yeah. places to go. Right. Yeah. yeah. Even non spiritually, you just a lot of times don't have guys, you know, hanging out. Um, we're kind of isolated, and, and certainly spiritual community. So I think there's probably other cultures that are just more naturally do that. So you can just kind of jump in and everybody's doing it. <laughs> but I think here it's like, no, if you want that brotherhood, that spiritual support with men, it's like, you're probably going to have to be really intentional about it and make it happen, you know, and it, it's going to have to be a real value, I think. Yeah. For, for us. Well, you know, I think women naturally congregate. Yeah. Isn't that interesting? Have you ever noticed, like, if you're in a coffee shop uh -huh. during the day, if, if you look around, sometimes there'll be, like, clusters of women, you know, I, this has happened to me before, mm -hmm. and, I, and I'll think... Wow, I don't, I don't see this happen very often with men, regardless of what time of the day it is, right, you know, right. but it just, yeah, it seems nat naturally women kind of, yeah. they're just, they're going to make that happen. Yeah. But I, I believe men know that it's in, I think in their heads, they know that it's, but you're saying it's actually initiating that right. activity, right? Yeah. You know, so yeah. I was recently knowing, uh, realized this, me and my wife and my son went on a recent trip to Dominican Republic for a little vacation and I was overtaken by how many women's groups there were there. No wow. men's groups whatsoever. Wow. I was just like, man, there's nothing but women at this place. I was like, it was crazy. Yeah. It was actually wow. overwhelming. I was like, wow. yes, because I think women initiate things, right? Mm. Men are not good at this. And so, it, you know, I believe that because of that, we have a world full of men that are isolated from brotherhood, that, are, mm -hmm. that live autonomous from 
all the great things that actually happen from brothers being together. Mm -hmm. And I know that we as wounded men sometimes are afraid of community. Mm -hmm. Why do you think guys are afraid of community? Yeah, I don't know. Maybe part of it could be it's unfamiliar, maybe it seems awkward, that sort of thing. Like, what will we actually do? And especially if it's not about things we're more comfortable with, whether it's sports or other stuff, it's like, mm -hmm. ooh, talking about things that are a little bit deeper, you know, what's what's that going to feel like, you know? And, and just being a little bit more vulnerable, we're not as used to that. Mm -hmm. And so all of it, I think, feels a little bit more unfamiliar and awkward. So... Mm -hmm. And we usually just don't love stepping into things like that, you know? Yeah. So I think it's overcoming that hurdle initially to say, you know what, I believe this is worth it. I'm gonna kind of get past that and trust that this is gonna be a good thing mm -hmm. for me, so. Yeah. Both you and I have led numerous groups over the years with mm -hmm. men in them. I would say all that's true. I mean, I've heard every excuse in the book uh, yeah. for a man not coming to an, a, a group experience of any kind, right. by that way. Yeah. I don't feel qualified. I don't know the answers. I don't want to be found out. I don't like the other guys. I don't like you. You know what I mean? You know, yeah. sometimes they say those things, sometimes they yeah. don't. Uh, but there's all these excuses, and we do find any excuse when a uh, an environment is very unfamiliar mm -hmm. for us. But if we can push through that, there's a lot of benefits. So mm -hmm. on the other side of this whole equation, there's a benefits that come from community that we've seen, right? right. What are a few of them that you've experienced? Yeah, um, I'll just start with the most basic. I think a lot of times they're really fun. There's something about getting yeah. together with guys and on a level that's a little bit more meaningful mm -hmm there tends to be a lot of laughter and I, which I think can be surprising. So that's just to start with like, this is kind of cool to, to join with like minded guys, you know? And then I think the other, uh, a big one is just to find out that your struggles, you know, are not just yours, mm -hmm. you know? Cause if we're all isolated, well, who knows? Maybe I'm the weird one, you know? <laughs> and you start talking to other guys and it's like, oh, oh my gosh, what a relief. You've struggled with whatever it is, you know, mm -hmm. in your marriage or in parenting or in even more, you know, personal things, whether it be lust or all mm -hmm. of that. It's like, oh, okay, we're all wrestling with a lot of these things together, mm -hmm. uh, but now together mm -hmm. instead of isolated before. Mm -hmm. So I think that's a big one. And just to say, man, uh, okay, good. I'm not alone. And yeah, now how can we help each other? Yeah. You know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And it's funny when you sit in a group, because I know you and I have led groups. You know, we sit in these groups and we see these guys, their eyes kind of light up because you mm -hmm. can kind of see that they're having that moment because somebody else has shared something. They go, you have this problem too? Mm -hmm. Like, odd. Ah, I thought I was the only one in the entire world that ever had this problem. And they're like listening to somebody yeah. else share it. And it just opens up an experience in a group setting where you're like, wow, I am, I'm normal. Mm -hmm. I'm normal. And then yeah. maybe we can figure out how to tackle these issues together mm -hmm. that ain't been talked about, right? right. Ever. Yeah. And because you don't, you can't trust an environment. You're scared. Mm -hmm. You know that you don't have the answers. You're perplexed by them. I can't tell me, tell you how many times you and I have talked about raising kids, right? Mm -hmm. And yeah. that where we've talked to each other about marriage issues or kids issues mm -hmm. that have made me a smarter man just because you and I have talked about it, mm. right? Yeah, for sure. And I mean, you were a ton smarter when <laughs> I'm talking to you about the challenges I face, right? I mean, don't we get smarter from that? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> I, I really do. I think because some of those parents that's such a good example I think it's you know you get into it and some of those things feel so nuanced I guess so just hearing a general talk is helpful but when you can actually be talking to other guys and you know and say man I get into this thing and I get really upset with my kids and I don't feel like myself and somebody else says oh my gosh I do too and boy but this is what I did that really helped me it's like wow, that really helps. A, that I'm not alone in struggling, but B, to get some actual wisdom that I can really take and use. Um, huge help, I think. I know, or we can just kind of say, hey, I know this guy that struggles with this issue. <laughs> <You're> <laughs> yeah, right. this we kind of play guy. the car. Yeah. He has my friend, a <laughs> name, struggles with these things. Well, you know, today, uh, and Jesus is in John 17 here, and we're just reading his high priestly prayer, which is at the close mm -hmm. of his life. He's giving us mm -hmm. encouragement. He's telling us the importance of brotherhood. Uh, and he, as he's praying for us, he says this in verse 21. He says that they may all be one, just as you, Father, are in me and I in you, that they may also be in us, that the world may believe that you have sent me. I love those words. I know it's a little bit of a tongue twister, mm -hmm. but it's so important because... 
what I hear in that is that Jesus understands and values the, uh, the idea and the concept and the actual experience mm -hmm. of community. Mm -hmm. we, we forget that Jesus lived in a community, right. don't we? Mm -hmm. uh, a spiritual community mm -hmm. with the Father and the triune God, Father, Son, and Spirit. Mm -hmm. And he's actually modeling the importance of this as he's praying his, one of his final prayers. It's crazy, right? right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. Jesus must have thought the community was somewhat important. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think we see it, of course, on a human level, that his main yeah. approach is to hang out with these 12 guys. And right. even within them, you see three, Peter, James, and John a lot. Mm -hmm. They kind of share some special friendship there. And uh, But yeah, to think that even within, like you said, the Godhead itself, Father, Son, and Spirit, that they have been experiencing community for all eternity. Mm -hmm. And what I love about that passage, you see how they they honor one another. You know, mm -hmm. glo the word glory or glorified is used many mm -hmm. times in this section of just, you know, lifting one another up. You know, they want to bring honor and glory within. And, and it's just a beautiful picture. And I think what God is saying is like, I want to invite you into that, right. you know, as right. men. And I want you to get to experience this kind of community you know so it is it's pretty i mean it's beyond our full comprehension really but it's amazing to see that god himself is modeling what we're talking about yeah it, it's super cool because mm -hmm. i think that jesus says there's dividends for this right mm -hmm. and the dividends are the not only the expansion of the gospel but the relationships that are built in the meantime while we're waiting to move from here to there right mm -hmm. so what what a beautiful text and i I, I got to tell you, I think perhaps the challenge coming out of a message like today is to encourage men to take a chance on brotherhood, right? Uh, to remove themselves from isolation in their life, to remove themselves from autonomy and step into meaningful relationships. Mm -hmm. Because I know that I have always been made better mm -hmm. by spending time with guys like you, Vince. And it's because when we get together, God does great things to speak through you to me, mm -hmm. refines my spiritual gifts to you, mm -hmm. right? He does things. There's an exchange here that we don't see right. that makes us better mm -hmm. that we can't accomplish in isolation mm -hmm. from one another. And uh, I think the devil works overtime to keep us isolated from brotherhood. Yeah. He really does, yeah. especially in today's busy Mm -hmm. um, in intoxicated with self kind of world that we mm -hmm. live in. So, so guys, there's my challenge for you this week is to uh, take a chance on brotherhood, to take, take a chance by uh, making yourself maybe a little bit more vulnerable and accountable inside of a community with other guys and to continue this for a long time. So thanks for being with us and blessings on your journey in life. And we hope that you'll continue right along with this book, 30 Virtues That Build a Man. You can continue on your own. Just continue the discipleship and mentorship conversation and blessings to you. We'll see you next time.